Hi, I'm George and welcome to part 35 of the Horizon series. This week we have a look at the uh, leaks that we saw back in episode 33 of the booster segments. Uh, we don't want to have to go rebuilding the whole booster segments yet again, so we've considered a whole range of options for repairing them. Now as a part of that process we built a, another pressure chamber that uses exactly the same construction technique, uh, and so we're going to try and do the repairs on this first, and if that works then we'll apply them to the actual booster segments themselves. So let's first have a look at what we think the problem is, and then we'll have a look at those possible solutions. Here is a quick recap of the leaks that we saw in all three booster segments when we tested them. As the pressure comes up, we can see that the leak starts with a trickle and progressively gets worse. If we have a closer look, we can see the leak is between the aluminium inner nozzle and the inner layer of carbon fiber. Here is a simplified cross section of the nozzle. Here is the inner carbon sleeve attached to the aluminium nozzle. And here is the outer carbon sleeve along with a fiberglass spacer. And finally, we have an inner fiberglass layer that covers the end of the aluminium nozzle that's supposed to seal at the top of the joint. Now under pressure, we suspect that what's happening is that the pressure chamber stretches ever so slightly like this and delaminates from the aluminium nozzle that doesn't stretch as much and creates a gap here. At these pressures, even a small leak is significant. The leak then travels between the inner carbon layer and the aluminium nozzle to the outside. After long discussions on various options, we decide to go with the following. We chamfer the end of the nozzle, then add an o-ring, and over that we add an aluminium oversleeve with a nozzle extension. The whole thing then gets epoxied into place. The idea with the oversleeve is that as the composite chamber stretches under pressure, it's pressing into the aluminium rather than away from it, and hopefully maintaining that seal. The launcher then seals against this new extension rather than the inner nozzle, which is now redundant. So now let's do it for real. The first thing we need to do is make a special tool. The outside of the pressure chamber's nozzle is a bit lumpy and not quite cylindrical and we can't fit a 2 metre pressure chamber into the lathe. We start off by machining a special guide that will run inside the nozzle to keep everything aligned. Then we fit it inside this cup. Perfect. To the outside of the cup we attach an adjustable tool holder. And into that we can fit a sharpened lathe cutting tool. To stop everything from wobbling, we add a counterweight on the other side. And finally, we screw on this adapter so we can hold the whole thing in a hand drill. Here we're practicing on an old test brush chamber that we no longer need. Now that it seems to be working, we use it on the short test pressure chamber that we made especially for this test. The finish on the outside of the nozzle is quite good. Next we need to chamfer the end, so we replace the cutting tool with a different one that cuts at 45 degrees. This one was ground from an old drill bit. There's also a PVC stop inside the cup that prevents the tool from going too far. And here we're chamfering the end of the test pressure chamber. Now it's time to machine the nozzle oversleeve. We made this from a 42mm aluminium bar stock. Here's a quick montage of how it was made. The next step was to surface coat the chamfer with a thin coat of epoxy to give the o-ring a nice surface to seal against. Once that cured, we inserted the o-ring into the oversleeve and then epoxied the whole thing onto the pressure chamber. 
we're using 24 hour araldite to hold this in place. We stand it on its end so that the epoxy doesn't leak onto the o-ring and use some tape to prevent the epoxy from leaking out. We then put some weights on top of the nozzle to compress that o-ring a little and let it cure. After three days of letting the epoxy reach its maximum strength, we're ready to do a hydro test to see if we get any leaks. We again do the test in a frame as the nozzle isn't designed to be grabbed onto. Here's the test setup. We have three cameras positioned to film the nozzle from three different angles. As the pressure comes up, you can see that the frame stretched by a few millimeters and the nozzle adapter gets pushed out of the nozzle a little. It's all working as it should. As there is nothing to see, we've shortened the video, but when we reached 1000 PSI, we held the pressure there for a full five minutes to give enough time for any slowly creeping cracks to develop. The nozzle held well and there weren't any leaks. This was good news as it meant that we could now attempt to repair the actual booster segments themselves. So let's do that. Here are the three boosters ready for the fix. And here they are having their outside shaved round. And of course it was also time to make up three more of the nozzle oversleeves. This is a time lapse of making one of these. They take about an hour and a half to make. and each weighs about 64 grams. Before gluing the nozzle over sleeve on, we sand out the existing nozzle to a slightly bigger diameter, just to make sure that the launch tubes don't get wedged if we're slightly misaligned. We again apply a thin coat over the chamfered portion to give the o-ring a good surface to seal against and let it cure overnight. We sand and clean the surfaces to be glued. Then the o-ring can go in. Finally we can glue the nozzle on and wrap everything in electrical tape to stop the epoxy from leaking out. These pressure chambers are too tall for the workshop so we need to put them out onto the deck. This makes it easy to get to the top of them. And then again the weights can go on top of the nozzle to compress that o-ring. We did this two more times for each of the pressure chambers. Time to do some pressure tests. We fill the whole thing with water and top it off all the way to the top and put the hose adapter in. Sure. 
the pressure chamber then gets secured into the frame. Get the overexposed. We brought the pressure up to 1000 psi again and held it there for 5 minutes. There isn't a whole lot to see as there are no high pressure leaks, which is a good thing, but it makes for a really boring video, so we'll again skip that part. One thing that always sounds a little scary is hearing some of the fibers breaking as the pressure increases. But that settles after a while and the pressure chamber remains stable and quiet. After the test, we drain the booster and repeat it two more times for the other segments. And here are all three boosters finally successfully tested. Now, if this repair technique failed, the backup plan was to basically grind out the original aluminum nozzle, then flood the entire bottom end with epoxy, and then just drill a new nozzle through the epoxy. This had its own problems to solve, but we figured the first attempt was less destructive, and we could always go back and try this alternative. So we're back in business. We now have three good booster segments that we can continue assembling into one unit. Now, although the repairs worked, we did pay a small weight penalty, uh, but in the grand scheme of things, that's okay. It's a lot better than having to rebuild the booster segments yet again. In the next video, we start making the brackets that join these three segments together into the one big unit. So stay tuned for that. Anyway, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.